Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome into the Coffee Hour on this first Wednesday of the new month of January in the new year of 2021. And it's Newberry College Day here on the program. And Dr. Mari Sharons joins us. Mari, I was just looking back. I think you were last with us on like the 28th of August, uh, giving us an update on what had been going on on Newberry College's campus. And boy, a lot has happened since the 28th of August, for sure. Uh, it's been, uh, it's funny, Jimmy, the uh, the most overworked word right now is unprecedented, and hopefully we can get rid of that word in 2021. The, uh, the fall semester was definitely unprecedented, and I was just talking to the staff. We, we had a staff meeting today, and it's, it's like um, we were fortunate because we did some of the right things. We took the time to prepare the campus, and uh, you know, we, we staggered the students coming in over three weeks, uh, which meant that we only had like about 300 students a week that, that came to campus. Uh, each one of the groups, we really had a, a, a serious face-to-face conversation with them about how important it was for them to follow the protocols of social distancing and wearing the face mask and washing the hands. And, and I got to say, Jimmy, uh, the toughest one for our students was the social distancing. And, uh, but they got better at it. And, and because they got better at it, we were able, we, we had a 73 day countdown. We said, we have 73 days to finish the semester uh, in the classroom. And I just give all the credit in the world to the students uh, and the faculty that just uh, made it work. And we were able to stay in the classroom, Jimmy, for 73 days without an interruption. And uh, it was just, it was, it was a huge success. We had uh, on November 21st, we had two commencements uh, celebrating the, the, uh, the graduates from May of 2020, as well as December of 2020. So I think, I think all in all, it was, uh, we got through a, a very difficult fall semester and I'm just, uh, I think our students took it seriously, which did not happen across the country, as you know, but, um, I couldn't have been any more proud of them. Yeah, it, it's an amazing feat. Uh, you know, social distancing is not something college students are used to, but uh, obviously they did a pretty good job, and uh, it's amazing. So this the semester basically kind of came to an end right around Thanksgiving, and that was the plan. Uh, so what's what's the plan going forward at this point? Yeah, Jim, the... Um and, and, and you know, for your audience, that's a change for us. The semester typically ends around December 10th, and we just uh, we fast track the semester so we could so we could finish it just before uh, Thanksgiving. There were some final exams given after, but those were online. Um, so our students, for the most part, have been off the entire month of December. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the one caveat to that, Jimmy, is our. Our men's and women's basketball team uh, began practicing. They played some games in December. I think wrestling got in some practices, but no competitions. Uh, We introduced this year, uh, and once again, I think I think we were just fortunate to think of some of these things. We we had never had a J term, uh, at least not in recent years. So we introduced a, a J term so the students could take a three-hour course that began yesterday, January 4th, and ends like January 30th. Right. Um, we've, I think we've had about 300 students sign up for that, and that's um, we're pleased about that. It was a discounted price. It's online. Um, but it's a way to keep them engaged in, in studying without having to come back to campus because we were worried about the combination of the COVID-19 uh, in the flu at the same time. What, what is what is happening this month is our student athletes by sport are returning to campus during the last three weeks of January. Uh, that, that's when they're allowed by NCAA and by the South Atlantic Conference to begin practicing. So, so they're going to be coming back beginning uh, this Sunday. I think it's the tenth or eleventh, um, and then the. The football players actually come back, I think, January 25th. And that's back, yeah, because they're going to get ready for hopefully a spring season. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, 
the, so the protocol, Jimmy, is that all of our students, when they come back to campus, will only be allowed back on campus if they can show proof of a negative COVID-19 test mm -hmm. within, within five days of returning to campus. Uh, and that's, that's, you know, there's going to be no, that's uncompromising. We, we, we want to keep the campus again as safe as we can. The student athletes, I know, you, I know you know this, they're going to go through regular testing throughout the semester, probably two or three times a week. Right. Um, and then, and then thanks to DHEC, uh, just down the road, the non-student athletes will also have an opportunity to get tested on a more regular basis. So it's, it's our effort, you know, to keep the campus safe. We're also expanding the number of beds that we have, Jimmy, in terms of we had some isolation houses that we had in the fall. I should have mentioned this. Uh, this number would have been scary uh, on August 28th when we last talked. But we had about 120 positive uh, COVID-19 cases. But that was over, Jimmy, 15 weeks. Mm -hmm. So um, it was it was manageable. We, we had enough isolated houses. The students, uh, we were fortunate the students recovered quickly. And uh, hopefully... As the vaccine becomes more and more available, uh, we'll have an easier spring semester. But we have expanded the number of isolation beds and bedrooms that we have on campus for the spring semester. Well, that's uh, amazing. And I, I was one thing that has come out since we last talked, and this was early October. Uh, Newberry's enrollment holds pretty steady during all of this, and that is uh, that's just incredible. And we were. Absolutely. We were thrilled to have over 1,200 students again uh, in the fall. We had over 1,200 uh, in the fall of 19. We, we, were on, we were on a trajectory, as you know, to, to grow to about 1,250. But, but, but a huge success is just to be able to hang on to the enrollment that we had the previous year. And, and, and once again, in our staff meeting today, everything looks like we're going to have a strong enrollment for the spring again. And um, as you know, it, it takes the fall and the spring together to have a good year. But, it, but things look good. I was, I'm, I'm very pleased to, to say that we're going to have about 50 new students, a uh, combination of transfers, international students, and first-time freshmen that will be coming to Newberry in, in the spring semester. And, and right now it looks like our, our melt student loss between fall and spring semesters – it's going to be no worse than it, than it typically is. So um, I think it says a lot for the fact that uh, as a small campus, you know, we, we always had that personal aspect, Jimmy, but now we can say not only is it personal, but it's also safe. And I think uh, more and more people are looking at small campuses. Right. I know that uh, you and your staff had put together – uh, several different options uh, or plans, if you will, from let's just say from worst case to best case scenarios, uh, budgeting and all that kind of thing. But the good news is you were able to uh, be closer to the best case scenario, I would say. We were. We, uh, we put together a 10% um, a loss in enrollment and a 15% loss in enrollment. We shared that with the college community. Uh, we shared it with the board of trustees, as you know. Um, that would have required uh, eliminating positions, uh, eliminating programs, uh, a lot of cost cutting, and, and instead we were able to, 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 if you will, sculpt the budget a little bit, uh, which was necessary. But we have not been forced to uh, eliminate positions. Uh, we've been very judicious whenever we have a vacancy about, you know, thinking that vacancy through as to. Do we need to fill that position? Is it that position be better filled somewhere else? Um, but this is a much better scenario, and and it certainly has helped morale a great deal because right. some colleges, Jimmy, and, and I hate to say this, but especially community college, the two year colleges. I just saw a recent report for whatever reason, and I'm not sure what the reason is. Have across the country really been hit hard with student enrollment declines? Uh, just uh, I'm a big fan of the community college and the tech colleges, but, but I know they're struggling uh, through this pandemic, worse than the four-year schools are. 
Well, uh, I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, interview that you were with me back on August the 28th. Now, we may have known a little bit about some of this, but couldn't talk about it. But uh, come September, uh, Newberry College found out it firmly held its place among the South's most affordable institutions, rank number six, ranking high for economic diversity and social mobility, also rising in the list of those colleges listed among the best in the South, and ranked number one for least student loan debt. So uh, again, three or four very positive things there. Yeah, I think they're they're um, they're sort of consistent, Jimmy, with the uh, I guess with the core values of the college. At least I hope it it is the um, as as you know, we've had um, four or five years of no tuition increase guarantees, uh, no tuition increase promise to students that, that they wouldn't see a tuition increase during their four years. Uh, we've had the loan repayment promise where we where we said that if they worked full-time and made less than a certain level of, of dollars in terms of salary, that we helped them with their loan repayment. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think that just that speaks to the fact that, um, that we are highly ranked in the country in terms of social mobility. And that's what I think, I, I mean, that's why I love it. I, I just, I love what we're doing at Newberry College because when a student walks in the door at point A in their life, four years later, they're going to, they're going to just uh, have a trajectory to point B like they would have nowhere else. And that's what social mobility is, is all about. So if we can figure out a way to keep this affordable and accessible, it, it really gives you know, students who, who might have college, uh, you know, going to college a stretch in their life. But, but if we can help them get from point A to point B, it just opens up an unbelievable array of opportunities for these students and, I think they appreciate it. It's nice that it's nice that it's recognized, and I think the the one U.S. News and World Report ranking that just is off the charts. I wish I could figure out a way to advertise it and market it even better. Is in 2012, Jimmy, we were number 43 in terms of best colleges, best small colleges in the South. Number 43 eight years ago. We're number 11 today. That's quite a jump. And and I know the board feels the same way. That I knew this was going to happen when I when I said how thrilled we were to be number eleven. The board's reaction, which it was the previous year, is and why aren't we in the top ten? And and, and that's what we're going to do. We're, we'll get in the top ten and and hopefully someday be be the number one best college in the South in terms of small colleges. Right. Um, we're on the right trajectory. Amen. Well, uh, we mentioned uh, athletics a few minutes ago. I had a chance uh, several weeks ago, right before Christmas, I guess it was, to do a virtual coaches show with our two basketball coaches and with uh, our uh, wrestling coach. And we were kind of going through the scenarios that they had been playing at that point. I guess uh, all of the games prior to Christmas had already been postponed. But and I've used this phrase, I've overused this phrase, but as I pointed out to them, and they agree, it's still a moving target even today. Oh, it, it really is. Um, I know both the basketball teams were supposed to play more games, Jimmy, in December, and um, and as you know, it just, it just takes one one positive test in what they call the Tier 1 uh, uh, team, if you will, the players and coaches and staff it just takes one positive case because the teams are so small at 15 that um that you end up having to cancel a game so we we ended up canceling a number of games in december i know both teams are hoping to play this week i think we have a game maybe even uh this evening right if it's wednesday against wigget and and the one that i'm really concerned about is uh because i love our wrestling program we've got a great wrestling coach and uh is that's just going to be a tough sport, I think, Jimmy, to be able to to have a full season of, uh, of playing just with. Um, so I think it's, the, the challenge in terms of sports is going to be not only keeping the teams, you know, safe from COVID nineteen, but 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 how do you put all those games? We deferred all the fall sports to the spring. So how do you play all of the fall, all the winter, and all the spring sports? in the next 15 weeks of the spring semester. Yeah, it's going to be quite a task, Uh, and we'll look forward to trying to get through that. Uh, Football in the spring as well, which will be a little bit different. But the good news is I think we only have to go on the road twice, so that's some good news. 
We've actually, yeah, you're, thank you. Uh, we've actually figured out a way to have a six-game schedule and play four of those games at home. And um, and once again, I think I, I want to say, Jimmy, that the that the first game starts the first weekend of March. I think that's right. Day. I think that's right. And then goes through about the middle of April. Mm-hmm. And um, I I think I know our team's excited about playing. Uh, and and who knows we. We could be the first team that won a SAC championship in football twice in one year. Maybe we'll win the the spring SAC championship and come back and win the fall SAC yeah, championship. I'm I'm with you on that one. Well, since we last spoke, the uh, the new athletic performance center, which has been named for Mr. and Mrs. Yance, uh, Melvin and Dolly Yance, has been completed. It is absolutely gorgeous, and one day we're all going to get in there and take a nice close look at it. But uh, thanks to those uh, folks for helping to make that happen. And then you've had uh, an additional uh, anonymous uh, uh, pledge agreement to help out with the Setzer Field project too. So uh, talk about those two things a little bit. Well, I think the um, the uh, Melvin and Dalliance uh, uh, Athletic Performance Center, which for those of you that have been at the stadium, is the uh, the cemetery end of the stadium. It's just a it's a beautiful home now for uh, sports medicine. And athletic training, and it does. Uh, it, it really begins to make Sutler Field feel more like a stadium because you've now enclosed uh, the north end. The uh, thanks to uh, support from just a, a whole uh, hundreds of people. Um, the second phase of the stadium now looks like it's going to be a reality for us to be able to put a shovel in the ground, hopefully sometime in the spring. Um, and that's the, the the visitor side of the stadium, uh, or the uh, the east side of the stadium, mm-hmm. and that's the that's the phase that we're all, all excited about. That's where the locker rooms are going to be for, for for the teams, where the coaches' offices are going to be, the athletic department offices are going to be, <clears throat> classrooms are going to be. Uh, we've got three classrooms that will overlook uh, the field, and uh, that will, Jimmy make a second quad for us because you'll have uh, Walker and Pearson Hall to the north. You'll have the new phase two of the stadium to the west. You've got Eliezer to the south, and you've got the music building to the east. And I think it's just going to be a beautiful uh, uh, you know, quad for the campus. And what I like to say is we, we just had a, a big fundraising push uh, for the nursing and health science building. And that's, that's getting real close to being a, a 2021 project as well. And I, and I, with a little bit of help from a few more contributors, we could easily have three major projects going on in 2021. And that, that would be phase two of the stadium, the health science nursing building on the corner of, of college and Evans, the next in the next residence hall, which, which would be where the tennis courts are right now. Right, and who would have thunk all of that in a situation like we've been in? That just goes to show you the strength of uh, how things uh, have been going, and hopefully will continue to go. I know you've also got some uh, plans for some work down behind the music building as well. Uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what your what your pipeline is, Jimmy, but you're always a step ahead of everybody else. Um, yes. Um, one of the, the real um, facility deficiencies is we've only got one turf field, and we've got all these outdoor sports. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we're doing is we're going to be um, placing another uh, turf down on the field behind the Welcome Center and behind the Alumni Music Center. It's going to be a, a, a beautiful turf field that, that will accommodate practices for some of our outdoor teams, especially the cross and field hockey. And um, that project's been a little bit slow getting off the ground, and, and it's looking like it won't be ready until until April. And I wish that was different, but uh, with all that's going on with COVID-19 and, and all the work that contractors are doing, uh, we're pushing hard, but that, but that might not be a project that's completed until March or April. But at least it's on the drawing board. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, the other, and the other piece to that is, uh, because we're short on locker rooms, is we're building a locker room facility off the north end of Eliezer. And that'll be a locker room facility for men's and women's lacrosse and women's field hockey. And they're excited about it. it 
it'll, it'll accommodate about 120 student athletes who are sharing locker rooms with other teams right now. And uh, that should probably be a project that will, that will be completed in February. So, um, yeah, I guess, I guess my takeaway that I hope people see is uh, COVID-19 is certainly a challenge. Uh, no question about it. And yeah, you, your heart goes out to everybody who's been touched, who's had their family touched by by the pandemic. Uh, but as an organization, you also need to take and make an opportunity out of a situation rather than get you know stagnated. And I think this is a way for us to to keep progressing organizationally while uh, you know while feeling the pain that that it's caused so many people. And I, and I just I pray that we can find a, a vaccine and distribute it as quickly as possible and, and get beyond the pandemic. That's a great way to end it, I think. Mari Sharon, president of Newberry College, we thank you for joining us here on the Coffee Hour uh, this morning. Uh, Happy New Year to you and Sandy and everybody at Newberry College. Thoughts and prayers with all of you as you continue to work through all of this and uh, look forward to seeing you in person soon. But Jimmy, it's always a pleasure and, and for the college. And for Sandy and me personally, thanks for all you do. I I don't know what the college would do without you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.